Hey guys, welcome back to this lecture series. So my name is Brooke Morso, CEO of Physique by Science. I specialize in physique and performance enhancement. And today I'm going to be talking about my own version of muscle hypertrophy. <music> Now, before I get into this lecture, I really do want to ask you one really important question. Are you ready to grow some muscle? And let me just pause for a moment. Okay, okay, I hear it, I hear it, I hear you guys saying, hell yes. Okay, keep watching. So overview, what am I gonna be talking about? So I'm gonna be talking about the what and why and in the next lecture, I'm going to be talking about the how. Um, so what is muscle hypertrophy? Why would we even want to do this? Why should we care about this? Should we believe everything that we read on the internet, listen to on YouTube, see all these fitfluencers putting out information? Should we trust them? And are there any absolutes here? Stay tuned. So muscle hypertrophy, one book that I highly recommend is Science and Development of Muscle Hypertrophy by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. Um, I have the second edition of this book. It is absolutely phenomenal. The print version has such great articles, such great super nerdy images. And that's also where I got this um, directly from his book. So what is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of muscle tissue. So what does that mean? I do something, I wait a little bit, and hopefully it grows. That's all I need you to remember for muscle hypertrophy. Um, hopefully it gets bigger over time. If you do something, we expect some type of response, and hopefully that is growth. So hypertrophy of the muscle is just growing of the muscle and getting bigger. That's all we need to remember. So, some, some specific adaptations to exercise that we experience when we are experiencing muscle hypertrophy. And I'm going to talk about what actually happens and what is optimal in terms of nutrient intake as well. So, we're going to spend some time on this slide. So, adaptations to exercise stress. So, let's say you're an untrained lifter and you are just starting to take part in your very first muscle hypertrophy program. Very exciting. So the first one to three weeks of this program, you're probably just gonna be getting the feel for it. And mostly what's going to happen is these things called neural improvements or neural adaptations to the exercise stress that you're putting on your body. Um, so here, you're likely to be pretty sore, why? because our body is responding to this stress, very new stress of exercise. And basically the soreness is like your body trying to recover as fast as possible, and it doesn't really know what's going on. And it's like, damn, I'm sore. Tell this person to stop doing this right now. I don't like it. Um, and it's basically just recovering. That's what's going on. Um, so your neural improvements over these first few weeks of the program. So let's use the lat pull down, for example. Some people will train for two to three years and never really experience any neural adaptation or neural improvement in the movement just because they're simply going in and pulling down the machine without any thought of what, what the hell they're doing. I'm just going to be honest. Um, so a neural adaptation is actually performing the lat pull down and going, okay, I'm going to move my lats now. What does that mean? Okay, I need to like retract my scapula and mm, I kind of feel something here. Maybe you're not going to feel something on the first week. Maybe you're not going to feel something on the second week. But by the third or fourth week, you should be feeling some type of connection in the nervous system of your body. Like this should be a neural adaptation that is occurring in response to your exercise. AKA, you're just becoming good at what you're doing. 
So the second bullet here says muscle activation. Um, so when you do perform an exercise over time, again, you should be getting better at the movement the more you do it. And your ability to activate a muscle is going to determine your ability to grow a muscle over time. Um, again, this idea of just moving a load, I'm going to use the lat pull down again. If you go in and you just pull down, pull down the bar, you're likely going to get a really nice developed trap, you know? And you could perform lat pull downs for three to four years and grow your biceps really great. Like this, this probably was an accumulation of lat pull downs and Honestly, my um, struggle to perform lat pull downs to the ability that I want to is because I've been doing it wrong for so long. The ability to um, actually activate a muscle before performing a movement will actually very much so impact your ability to grow a muscle. Um, if you're not activating the muscle that you're wanting to target, you're probably not going to do a very good job at growing the muscle over time. The third bullet here that we see is protein balance. So what does this mean? If you guys do follow me on social media, I did just do a recent post on protein balance. Um, go check that out first. And second, I'm going to explain it here. So protein balance can be thought of um, in a few different ways. So your overall protein intake is going to be number one here and your ability to not only consume protein but absorb and digest the protein is going to play a huge a huge um, job in your ability to grow a muscle over time as well. The state in which you are able to really maximize muscle hypertrophy is in a, in a state where you're being fed enough, if not more than what is needed to stay the same. So that basically just means a caloric surplus or eating more than what you're burning is going to be the most optimal for muscle hypertrophy. Um, and consuming enough protein here is going to be essential to grow a muscle. Um, remember that protein is not a fuel source. It is primarily stored in the muscle. So our ability to eat protein is going to directly impact our ability to grow a muscle. And that word directly impact is not used a lot um, because we try not to associate things with absolutes. But the literature and the raw science of this here is when you eat protein stored in the muscle and if we want to grow something, we need to eat enough of it. And then on top of that, we need to eat enough calories, period, to maximize our ability to grow our muscles, if that makes sense. So protein balance is basically just maximized by resistance training, number one, in combination with eating enough protein over time. So a lot of people will eat a lot of protein and they'll be like, well, I am just bloated all the time, I don't feel good. Um, to maximize this, I recommend you eating four, five, six bouts of protein per day in the size of 20 to 40 grams of protein and leaving two to three hours between that time to maximize your ability to consume protein, but also digest and absorb that protein as well over time. Um, that's key here, digest and absorb protein to allow it to be stored in the muscle, you know, because if you just shove in a bunch of food and you can't absorb or digest anything, you know, it's probably not going to be digested or absorbed. And your ability to, you know, function inside is going to be um, not optimal, which isn't going to be optimal for growth. So protein balance, um, basically just resistance train, eat enough protein um, and enough calories, and you will be in a positive um, net protein balance here, which is what we want for maximizing hypertrophy. So that's all I'm going to say on the adaptations to exercise stress, what actually happens when you exercise, and on this whole topic of protein balance. So stay tuned and I will get into the drivers of hypertrophy, you know, what actually causes hypertrophy when we exercise, and I'm going to talk about three different things. So hang on and I'll see you in the next video.